Hello everyone, welcome back to Deep Dive. This is episode number 11. And today I'd like to talk to you about memorization. Although I do think you can perform very well with the score or music in front of you, I think when you uh, try to memorize, um, it's a difficult process. It takes time and energy and a lot of creativity to learn something and really have it uh, become a part of you. So the act of memorization itself, I think, forces you to um, get to know the piece better. And I think um, it could very well bring you to a higher understanding and eventually help you perform better. So today I'd like to walk you through a passage. This is a second theme from Tchaikovsky's Piano Concerto, First Movement, and I will walk you through all the steps that I take to memorize a passage like this. So let's do it. So as our memorization project, let's look at the 12 measures of Tchaikovsky's Piano Concerto, First Movement, Second Theme. It goes like this. I would do when I open the score, I would play it a few times to get to know its approximate shape. And what would stick out to me right away is that um, there are approximately two phrases here. The first phrase lasts just about four measures. The line goes up, then comes back down. So you can kind of, if you look at this landscape here, you can really see that um, the notes are rising and then at the very top we have this big chord that rolls and then it comes back down. The second phrase starts from that point on and goes all the way to the end of the phrase. And in the second phrase, something very different is happening. When I look at that, um, I see that things are repeating. This figure right here looks exactly the same as this figure. And then it repeats again. It tries to repeat again for the third time. So we're only looking at this, this descending line here. And this line goes like this. And then it happens again. And then third time. And then third time, it doesn't just rest here, but it, it moves downward. So third time, this keeps moving forward. enters. Now that we have the two phrases, I always like to look at what happens between phrase one and phrase two. So when you look at the music, the phrasing ends here and restarts. This is a pivot spot. And for me, um, the mood changes really with this chord right here. So I'll play it for you. to move to phrase two. So that's something I like to do when I am trying to learn a score. Um, is there a chord that changes the direction 
of the music and in my opinion that chord um, is significant so in my mind that chord stands alone aside from the two um, two phrases it's what links it it's what separates it let's look at the second phrase first and try to understand it and memorize it so we've already established that this thing repeats three times once um, and three times so what happens um, between these three times I feel like when you see anything by a composer written very similarly three times in a score it's usually heightening intention um, it's like asking yourself why would somebody say the same sentence three times each time there is some kind of important thing that they they really want to emphasize so this um it's almost like pleading when you think about it when you give this line to a singer i feel like it would be a very expressive line and let's look at the left hand something interesting happens in the left hand The left hand repeats basically twice. This in blue, I feel that there is a conflict between the right hand and the left hand. So as right hand is doing this, it's these right hand and left hand really responding to each other. Um, it's almost like they're trying to console each other or um, maybe it's the opposite maybe the left hand is making the right hand um, insist on its line a little bit more so that's when the interpretation comes in um, I could either play it like right hand and left hand are in conflict so in that way I would sort of interrupt right hands line by playing left hand a little bit more prominently it would go like this like um, they're same entity and they're just linking each other in that way I would put less emphasis um, in the beginning of the measure so let's experiment like that smoother line the landscape is a little bit um, the mountain is is not so steep uh, and uh, when you have that figured out you, once you decide which way you're gonna go with then um, you have to see which note you're gonna emphasize is it is it going toward the end or is it leaning in the beginning and then backing away? I kind of um, lean toward um, leaning in the beginning of the measures of, of this um, expression. And um, after I decide that, then you look at the notes. This is when I would really um, try to remember which notes go where. So what's important is the first note. This is a G, whereas the height of the left hand is an A flat. So there is a, there's that clash there, which I think makes, um, this kind of um, tension um, building uh, makes sense. So, so in memorization um, wise, 
the first thing I would remember is the G, and then there's a second G, and then the third G, and in the left hand it's A flat, A flat again, and then when it happens the third time, the left hand does not play the A flat. It simply gives up or it says, okay, enough. So it leaves uh, the third time around. So having that in mind, I, in my mind, I have memorized G on the right hand, A flat in the left hand. Second time, G in the right hand, A flat in the left hand. And then third time, G, then the left hand abandons and the right hand um, cascades down the piano. So that's, that's a kind of scheme that I would remember. And um, with each repetition, I would decide to heighten the tension a bit. So when it's the third time, it's like building first time, second time, third time, and it, it um, and then it goes somewhere because we have built the momentum and it flows over, which allows the right hand to descend down to um, further melody. Now that we thought about the second half of the melody, let's go to the first half and do similar kind of um, interpretive thinking. We've already established that the first two measures, it goes up in pitch and also in energy level only to get to a big chord, that chord with a squiggly sign next to it, and then it comes back down. So how would we remember this, um, this phrase, note by note? So when we look at it closer, let's zoom in. This section, when I look at the top line, Just circle it in pink it looks a bit like like this to me it's B flat falling to a and then coming back up a little bit and these two figures first two measures look very similar um, in shape so and the second half are just all quarter notes. So I would instantly divide these, this phrase into two. The first part is, and then second measure, and if you look at it closely, you would know that there is a two note phrase that we've been talking about. It's, it's this is separate and then Lean, release. So it's a two note phrase. So I would know that beginning of this melody is, is two, two note phrases with sort of a pickup. And when I play that, I would instantly notice um, this conflict in the left hand. Something delicious is happening <laughs> right here. Because um, this note, whenever you see a figure that's off by just a little bit of chromatics or it's like a wrong note sounding um, pitch that resolves to the right note, right note meaning it, um, it belongs in that measure a little bit more than the other one. So when you look at um, the beginning of the measure, this is, um, this is a G natural. And here we have a G flat, then a G natural. So between the right hand and the left hand, there is a, we have this, and then this kind of clash that happens, um, I like to kind of bring it out, make sure that people are aware that that is there. So, so 
that's another thing I would remember memory wise that there is a there is a conflict in G and G flat in measure four, um, and until that point, um, it's not really an issue. All the other chords seem to fit. Um, of course, that's a suspension. to that bass. So that's something else I can hang on to um, in that phrase. So as you can see, what I like to do is really look at the score and find things that um, stand out to me, that you, looks unusual, sounds unusual, has some kind of um, emotional content, and then ask myself, should I bring it out or should I not bring it out? And um, really, locate where it is and place it in my memory so everything is starting to fit in and I can get a bigger picture um, more clearly. Next part that I would like to look at is in the second part of the phrase in the left hand. The part I, I'd like to zoom in is right here. And I'd like to talk about what happens right here in the left hand. This kind of thing um, I really pay attention to because um, there is a gap um, in where the keys are. So from this chord, goes down the keys uh, this is the first time that the left hand descends lower than this note and in the concert um, when you're memorized and you're performing this um, descent into the lower part of the um, the keyboard might seem very awkward whenever there is um, a gap a silence or a rest and then I'm playing a slightly different part of the piano I like to really Pay attention to that because it could feel very awkward and your head has to tell your arm yes it's correct don't question yourself so when I get there so with this melody I definitely know that um, the left hand goes further down as a right hand descent so there is um there is an immediate um, recognition of what this arc of the melody looks like. Starting from the beginning, I sort of have um, this image in my head that goes uh, it goes up and then sort of does this and then goes all the way down. Um, really quickly. So that's sort of the arc of what I have in mind um, with this melody. After all of that work, I like to uh, really play the different hands separately, really try to examine every single thing that's going on, not only the primary lines, but what, what happens in the secondary line, the inner lines, the things you might um, maybe miss um, if you don't think about it. So. Uh, next step is really looking at this melody from many different angles and getting all the little details in your system. And that is um, not something that you can hurry. It'll take time and it'll be hard to remember um, in the beginning. It just has to become like second nature to you over time. But when you're thinking about it very cre creatively and um, you're creating a story and you're thinking about tension you're drawing a picture, you're selecting your favorite chords. I think that memorization process will come naturally to you and that is um, the point I'm trying to make with all of this. It's never this chord comes after this chord, this note after this note. If I thought like that, then it would um, never get to the end. I would never be able to play the whole piece. It's, um, it's an expression, notes, attached to meaning. So um, what it means, what it represents, the kind of emotion it stands for, that's the most important 
thing that you should decide when you're looking at a score, memorizing a score. So I hope um, this first deep dive on memorization helps you look at the score differently and really try to um, start memorizing a piece that um, you feel very close to. So thanks for watching and I will continue more tips on memorization next week.